Hello, I'm Courtney. Welcome to a demonstration of my solar system astrophysics simulation created by the physics education technology team at the University of Colorado Boulder. It's accessible for free through the FET website, along with a lot of other really cool science simulations. A uh, link in the description. So we have two simulation options, intro and lab. And we'll go over the basic intro option first. You can see the simulation is in the center of the screen with controls to the left and the right. On the left, you can manually adjust the mass in kilograms by using these slider bars. They're color coded to their planetary bodies. Click center of mass here to use the center of gravity or the object's balancing point where its mass is equally distributed. The center of mass is where we measure distance from, not the outer edge of the planets. On the right control, you have your play button to commence simulation or pause, fast forward, and rewind. You can adjust between slow, normal, or fast simulation speed. I like fast. Mm. There's an automatic year counter to track orbiting paths over time. Below that's the panel for the center of mass. Yeah. Speed in kilometers per, kilometers per second and velocity, which is uh, meters per second and a uh, slider bar for adjusting gravitational force. Like this, and see your vector arrows. There we go. You have a, a grid feature, which can help with precision when using the measuring tape and to gain a better understanding of how the bodies move with fixed coordinates. The measuring tape can be placed and dragged to any point along any orbit. And uh, you can find exact quantities through here for calculations. You can also check the box on the left for more data. Oh, that's in the, the lab. And um, the orange reset button will reset everything back to factory settings. There's some preference features like projector down here in settings and interactive highlights, which I find useful. Um, projector mode is useful for classrooms. You can turn the audio on and off, uh, which is like really cute little planetary sounds going on. And uh, you also have links to the FET website and other technical aspects along with 60 different um, languages to choose from. So let's go ahead into option two, the lab. So we have the same features, but now we have the ability to control how many bodies we want to simulate, as well as specific planetary combinations. And this is where it really gets fun. You can also place bodies where you want and set their vector directions uh, by clicking and dragging. So place your bodies, change your vectors, and change your masses. I'm going to select how many bodies you want. And up here in the uh, customs tab, we have all these fun different combinations. So what this simulation is trying to teach is gravitational dynamics of planetary motion. Gravity and centripetal force is responsible for the orbits of planetary bodies. The simulation lets you play around with different controls for the purpose of testing stable and unstable system outcomes. Playing around with more than two planetary bodies usually results in one being extinguished or all of them ejecting themselves. And this is because of the interplay between the complexities of each body's gravitational force. <laughs> Pow. <laughs> for a planet to have a stable orbit, it needs to have a minimum velocity to maintain a uniform circular orbit. Even though it's called uniform circular orbit, it's actually an elliptical orbit. You can see this here. An object's velocity increases when it approaches another object with gravitational force. So the moving object will have decreasing potential energy and increasing kinetic energy as it draws nearer. And gravitational force pulls on the object, creating a slingshot-like effect. 
It's like a push and pull because they're compensating for each other's potential and kinetic energy differences in order to maintain a balanced dynamic. Even though the reason for the orbit is gravitational force, that force actually does no work on the moving planet. Centripetal force is responsible for maintaining circular motion because the velocity vector of a, planet's, of a planet is perpendicular to the gravitational force. Centripetal force points towards the center of mass, fixing the planet on a curved path. The gravity of a larger planetary body will create centripetal force on a smaller orbiting body. An example we see in our own Earth and man. For objects in fixed orbits with each other, even when their velocity is increasing, it still isn't enough to reach escape velocity, so they remain in orbit around each other. These dynamics are why our solar system and others like it can remain stable over incredible expanses of time. Every time planets pass each other, they have a small effect on each other's motion. So our solar system is constantly changing, even though minutely. I really like this one. Over time, effects like these can completely change a body's orbit. It's so interesting to think about the comets we see in the sky over our lifetime, that they actually have a small but measurable effect on our orbit around the sun. Thanks for listening to my solar system demonstration, and good luck with your pursuits.